Ciao, and thank you for your interest in Fiat returning to the U.S. market. During our journey, we'll discuss the first factory in Italy and in America, the grand racing history of Fiat, the most unusual test track in the world, our association with Ferrari, a Fiat-powered aircraft that still holds a world speed record today, Fiat's involvement in the trucking industry, and about Fiat's automotive suppliers, which are well known and include the world's largest foundry. To truly understand Fiat, one must first appreciate its vast roots in automotive history. In 1899, a gentleman named Giovanni Agnelli and a group of forward-thinking men resolved to form Fabrica Italiana di Automobili Torino, F-I-A-T, for Fiat. It literally means Factory of Italian Automobiles Turin. The first Fiat factory was built in Corso Dante. The staff included 150 technicians, which assembled the first year's production of 24 cars. The car was called the 3.5 CV, and Fiat was off. While Fiat's logo has changed over the years, Fiat's dedication to automotive innovation and engineering excellence has not. Fiat was so innovative that it was actually winning races before the Ford Motor Company even opened. Fiat was always considered a luxury car, with prices starting many times higher than the Ford Model T of the time. Fiat made many body styles and horsepower models. But what is more remarkable, Fiat opened its first manufacturing plant in the United States in 1908. Here workers assembled cars a full five years before Ford's assembly line for the Model T was finished. Fiat innovation, racing, and development continued until something really spectacular happened in 1916, groundbreaking on the new Lingotto plant. The building was innovative itself. It was made of reinforced concrete, was five stories tall, it was part sculpture and part proving ground with a test track on its roof. It was completed in 1922. At Lingotto, Fiat developed a wide range of vehicles over the years, while other Fiat subsidiaries built the highly successful IFCO trucking industry, the Pendolino tilting trains, and even a jet fighter for NATO forces. As a matter of fact, this Fiat-powered aircraft broke all world speed records and held them for four years in 1934. The plane still holds world speed records for the fastest propeller-driven seaplane ever built. And while not as fast as a plane, Fiat's innovative Pendolino trains allowed much higher speeds on standard rail track due to the tilting body design. Fiat even owns its own robotics company, making robots for automotive assembly plants and even the aerospace industry. Now for a little test. True or false, Fiat owns Ferrari, Alfa Romeo, Lancia, Maserati. That's right, Fiat owns them all and is the sixth largest automotive manufacturer in the world, dwarfing Daimler and Mercedes, BMW, and Mazda. I like to think there's a little Ferrari in every Fiat. Fiat was Italy's first formalized automotive manufacturing plant, and today it is the largest. But now I'd like to take a look at the 1950s, when a new car came into being, the Cinquecento, the Fiat 500. It appealed to a new generation of drivers in European markets, and interestingly, where before 1957's introduction, there were about 130 motorcycle manufacturers in Italy. 
After 1957 and the introduction of the 500, there were only about 30. The Cinquecento moved a generation of motorcycle riders into automobiles. While designed to be economical, that didn't mean the new Fiat wasn't fun to drive, with many people rallying and racing the vehicle during its long history. And the 500 carried on the racing tradition with the Abarth modifications becoming very popular. Well over three and a half million 500s were produced from 1957 to 1977. There were other popular Fiat models in the following years, but nothing really quite captured the spirit of the 500. That is until 2004, when a new 500 was penned up by Roberto Giolito. Interestingly, while it was Roberto that penned the original design, it was Frank Stephenson of Mini Cooper fame who came to Fiat and finished the design, later to go on to Alfa Romeo, a Fiat sister company. Upon its introduction, the new 500 was an immediate hit its beautiful interiors and sighting external line evoke a very visceral response. Still, this new 500 is not just the case of a pretty face. There's some real technology behind it, like the new multi-air engine, which gives better mileage, better performance, and lower emission, actually topping the mileage of some smaller vehicles. And in the area of safety, Fiat is the first subcompact car to win a full five-star rating due to its solid structure and seven passenger airbags. But don't worry, all this style, technology, safety, and economy doesn't cost too much with prices starting at just $15,500. Fiat's new 500 captures the essence of the original, the spirit of the Fiat company, and the minds of a new populace. I'd like to invite you to come out to Fiat of Strongsville soon to test drive the new Fiat 500. Until you do, no picture can truly ready you for what you'll experience. I'm sure that you'll find that our Italian design Fiat Studio takes the automotive experience to new heights. And remember, you'll never forget your first Fiat.